Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm with Demi. She's a student ther uh, therapist. So today we'll be talking on uh, depression. So Demi. Hi guys, thank you Shebin for having me here. Like you already said, my name is Bemi and I'm here to talk about depression to make it simple, okay. even though it sounds hard. <laughs> okay, so a lot of people actually go through depression on a daily basis. Um, so there's, a diff there's, I found out that there's a difference between uh, clinical depression and uh, being depressed at the moment. So what are the difference between being depressed and uh, a clinical depression? Okay, so um, clinical depression is when a person has um, gone to a hospital that, or a clinical psychologist and then um, the person um, has been confirmed yeah, to be clinically depressed. So you can't say, oh, you're depressed. You can't use that term. So you, so you've gone to the hospital and then psychologist and psychiatrist said, okay, after all the tests and everything, I can now say you are depressed. And then being depressed for a moment is just maybe feeling very subtle symptoms of depression. Okay. So uh, oftentimes uh, we hear, uh, I'm depressed, I'm this, I'm that. And we want to know reasons, certain reasons why people, can, people get depressed. Okay. Um, life is a real coaster, like I always say, and you have ups and downs. There are times that all oh, things aren't working out well. Maybe someone was fired from a job. Maybe someone lost um, an important person. Maybe um, someone had an altercation with <laughs> a significant other, and yeah. then you begin to feel sadness you begin to think about it you begin to weigh your options and um for very visible signs you become withdrawn you stop participating in activities that you do you withdraw from friends you just want to be alone and when it becomes extremely worse you can a person can even become fixated that means maybe they'll stay in one spot and not move for weeks Okay, okay. So now, uh, when someone is depressed and the person doesn't want to, uh, most most time people don't want they don't want to associate with people. They don't want to tell. Uh, they don't want to associate associate with people. They don't want people to actually know. So how do we actually get to know these signs and symptoms in people so that we can help out as a, a person of concern? Okay, please always look out for your friends look out for your loved ones look out for people generally if you notice oh a friend usually um comes to this place he loves football he doesn't play football anymore check up on your friend what exactly is going on if you see someone not doing well in school you might need to check up on them because sometimes it's not that they don't know it there's something that is disturbing them taking their mind away from it if you see someone not eating you see someone not using social media for a very <laughs> long time when it's not here yeah. yeah. when it's not their choice yes then you should check check up on that person and find out oh what's going on and for some people they'll just be fixated in a spot you might need to get the psychiatrist or psychologist to come over and check them out okay so uh often time People usually think depression is not uh, a sickness. They think, don't worry, you can't be depressed. People, uh, like people don't think you can take drugs for depression or have a, a psychiatrist or some, they don't generally believe that depression is a sickness. So I want to actually help you, uh, I want you to help educate our viewers now, like to tell us whether depression is a sickness or uh, it's actually not a sickness. So in psychology, we don't use the term sickness. Okay. Depression <laughs> is a <Sorry>. mood disorder. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Depression is a mood disorder. So when people have been clinically proven to be depressed, you can say, okay, that person is suffering from this disorder. But if someone is showing very subtle signs, just sad at this moment this you can say oh this person is sad at this moment and then after that you find that the person has recovered from it so yes um people can suffer from this disorder okay so um 
you know this general belief that as a Nigerian you can't be depressed. Uh, parents don't believe uh, my child can be depressed. Like I'm buying food for him. He's wearing nice clothes. He has uh, a <laughs> exactly. So there's this general belief that uh, my child can be depressed. So what? How do we? Con- uh, how do we combat that? That idea, that ideology, or that uh, talk of my child can be depressed. Okay, so I feel like the people that have um, the basic things of life that are comfortable are not supposed to be sad. They're supposed to be up and doing. And then friends, African friends, Nigerian friends, will decide to believe that, okay, why are you sad? What's making you sad? What's making you sad? <laughs> Depression is actually very real. You can have a situation where um, you have triggers. That's, for example, maybe a circumstance or a situation that brought about depression. Or you can have someone just depressed because they got, they are likely to fall into that line because they got the gene from their parents or grandparents or something like that. So people do get depressed. When sad things occur, when people are down, you might need to just be really there for them so that they don't fall all the way into depression. Okay, so uh, there's this other saying that, uh, Nigerians generally don't want to go for therapy. They don't believe in therapy. <laughs> they don't believe in therapy. They feel it's a waste of money. Why don't you just go to uh, just wait for a moment that it to pass? That no, there's no need for you to talk to somebody about it. So this ideology that we don't, you don't need to see uh, a specialist about uh, things that you are going through. Or you don't need to talk about certain things. How do we combat that ideology? So how do we? say uh, are we saying now that therapy is good for uh, people people need to go and talk more about their feelings and add their, what they are going through and creating a uh, safe space for themselves especially nigerian men you know nobody wants to wait everybody's for me ad guy ad guy i, I can't talk about my <laughs> i can't talk about my feelings so let me just say that it will pass so how do we uh, tackle that ideology that uh, toxic idea that I don't need to talk about my feelings or um, it's a past. So what do we say about going to therapy? Okay. Um, we are all human beings and we feel things. We have emotions. We can get upset. We can become sad. We can be happy. We can feel things generally. And so yeah. I think we need to eradicate that mindset that um, you don't need to go for therapy that means you are mad or something if you yeah. want to go and talk to a therapist or something no you are not mad you just need someone to talk to you know p- people have a hard time trusting other people and therapy is a safe zone therapy helps you find okay what's the underlying problem behind what you're facing and doesn't just fix the symptoms or fixes the problem itself so please it's not a bad thing to go for therapy. It's not a bad thing to see a psychologist. No, you are not mad. <laughs> you are not mad. You are just seeking for solution. Because in Nigeria, I'm going to say that many are mad, but few are room. Um, few are rooming. Yeah. What I mean is that um, a lot of people have really subtle problems earlier on in life, and over time, because of oh, they don't they don't go to the hospital, they don't do checkup, they are not caring about it. They're just like it will pass, it will pass. By the time they become older, they realize that, okay, this has really built up into something and then you can have a full-blown disaster. This can be handled by going for therapy earlier and maybe getting it resolved or if it has to be managed, the person can still live a good life alongside maybe ter- continuous therapy or use of drugs. So please go for therapy if need be. Therapy is a safe zone. Okay, okay let's do this. Um... Let's talk about these uh, moments when people are depressed and they feel uh, fixating on a certain substance, like a drug or alcohol, or maybe sex, for example, or doing something that to take them off that uh, mood. And later on, they discover, they discover that it actually get them addicted to that thing. Do you think it's, uh, it's actually safe to uh, encourage people to do other things 
as, except from dealing with that uh, moment, that depression, or to uh, what what positive thing can we actually do to to stop people from being addicted to certain things that actually is a cause of the depression? 